It's no secret that Figma is a super powerful design tool and being able to easily run plugins is one of the reasons why designers, myself included, choose Figma to design not only apps and web pages, but also social media posts, presentations, and even to illustrate. More and more AI powered plugins for Figma keep popping up and trending. And today I decided to test a few different ones. To use some of them, I had to register through the developer's website, but I chose only plugins that are available for free or that at least offer some kind of free trial without you having to enter your credit card details. So I'll give you a brief description of each one. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to share my favorite ones and how I would use them to make my life a little bit easier as a web designer. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Mayara. I am a freelance brand and web designer and content creator. And I believe in working with AI instead of against it and that artificial intelligence and design and business overall is a game changer. If you're a new freelancer or if you're starting a digital business, I think you'll really like to be a part of our little community here and all you have to do is hit subscribe. So plugin number one is called Wireframe Designer and it generates a concept from a text prompt. So for example, this is what it comes up with when I enter a mobile app for planning tasks for the day. Number two is WireGen. And this one does something a little bit similar, generating a wireframe from a text prompt. And it also includes a description with best practices. And we're going to pretend that they didn't use Comic Sans here. Then we have text to design, which again works similarly to those other two plugins, but it doesn't generate the entire wireframe, only small sections. And it is also a text to image generator. So you have everything in one place. The fourth one is AI image generator. And what caught my eye was the fact that FreePick is the developer and the image generator on FreePick's website is not really the greatest, but the plugin comes up with much better results. I tried a few prompts that I have already used with Midjourney and the results were actually impressive. Conjure AI is the fifth plugin on our list and it's an image slash icon generator, super easy to use and with beautiful preset styles. Plugin number six is called Photo Room and they also have a mobile app that I tried a while ago and I was really impressed by it. It removes and generates background images in a very realistic way and it's a plugin and app that I 100% recommend if you run social media channels for e-commerce stores, for example. Number seven is AI image upscaler, something that we all need every now and then. And this is a really good and fast one, and it doesn't add any watermarks to your image. Here's the before and after. Now let's talk copy. Plugin number eight is Scribe AI. And to run it, you need to select a text box. Then all you have to do is give it a prompt, select the type of content you're writing, word count, tone of voice, and reading level. It's going to replace your text automatically. Magic Copy is another plugin that can replace dummy text in your mockups. It quickly generates headlines and subtitles without you having to enter too much information. So I wouldn't rely on it to create actual content, but at least you won't have to use Lord and Mipsum. The 10th plugin I tested was Font Explorer AI. And don't expect much from this one, but it's a nice thing when you need some inspiration or if you're just getting started in design. Select a text box and enter a couple of keywords to replace the font. Let's say you want a youthful serif font or an elegant sans serif, and it can help you find the perfect option for your design. And the final plugin that I want to mention is one that I have seen a lot of people talking about it recently and that I have used before they even had an AI powered tool. And that is builder.io. You do need an open AI API key to use their design generator. And honestly, this one was kind of a letdown. Builder itself is an amazing tool, but their AI powered functionalities still need improvement. Now let's talk about my top three plugins from this list. Number one has got to be photo room. And I know that plugin like, seems so specific, but there are so many use cases like for a hero section, for Facebook ads, for Instagram posts, like you can use it in so many different ways and the results are so good, such high quality. And here's exactly how I use it. You have to register on their website and with a free account, you get 10 credits a month. When you run the plugin for the first time, it'll ask for the API key and there's a link that takes you directly to the page where you copy it from. Then you can run the plugin and this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to paste an image here. I'm going to remove the background and I'm going to generate a new one. You can see here they have this huge list and I selected one that I think has everything to do with this image and look how mind blowing this is. So I'm going to paste it again and let's try a different background. And this time I'm going to change the aspect ratio of the image. So it's going to fill all of that background, even the empty parts. Let's say that I am designing the hero section of a website. So this is like a very quick example of what you can do. So I'm just going to expand this image. I'm going to remove the background again, and I'm going to go for the minimalist background. 
And you know what? Let's go one step forward and use some other plugins from that list to create this very simple, minimal hero section for a website. And this was the final result in like just a couple of minutes. Can you believe it? I think my second favorite was the Image Upscaler just because it works really well and it's really hard to find a free tool that does that. I usually go for Upscale Media or there's I think Pixel Cut that also does a really good job. But the thing is just having that inside Figma makes it so much easier. It doesn't really work with really large images, but I think when we're talking about, you know, mobile apps and web pages, we don't really work with those dimensions. So I think it's the perfect image upscaler for web designers. Number three has got to be wireframe designer because I wouldn't even call it a wireframe. It looks pretty polished up. I have noticed though, like, because I tried it a few times before I made this video, that it kind it's kind of always the same thing. So I wouldn't really, you know, rely on it or copy an entire section from there, but I would definitely draw inspiration from it. If you can pair it with a wire gen, I think that's a great idea because wire gen gener generates all that description that maybe, you know, you can combine both things and come up with a new idea. But what I always say is that AI is not here like to do your job for you completely. Of course it can help you. It gives you shortcuts, but it's not going to, you know, deliver the final result. We have to put in the work and the brains, all our creativity and, you know, all our experience, because if not, what's the point of even having a designer behind the project? But every designer has, you know, those creative block days and days when it's really hard to come up with something brand new and out of the box. And the same way that we use you know, Behance and Pinterest to look for inspiration, we can now find some new ideas in these AI tools. I think the biggest letdown was the builder.io plugin just because I, I know the tool, I know how great it is, and I was, I was expecting a little bit more from them. And the, the copy ones, I mean, they're great, so we don't have to use Learn Ipsum when we are delivering something to a client, like a mock-up for them to review. Like this, we can have something that's a little closer to what the final copy might be, but I wouldn't rely on them for actual content, and I think ChatGPT, especially with GPT-4, does a much better job. I think it's more about the convenience of having, you know, that type of text there straight on Figma so you don't have to go to ChatGPT, try to think of a prompt to, to then copy and then that's not even going to be the one that your client's going to use. So, I mean, like this works fine, but yeah, I think my biggest concern is that people will start using it for actual copy and they just don't really sound great. I think we're heading a really interesting path when it comes to AI tools for web designers. I think we will have um, a lot of these plugins will die. First of all, when I was scrolling through Figma's community, you know, and, and the plugins tab there, I saw that a lot of them has have been discontinued or they are just not getting updates anymore. And to create a plugin that does like a really good job is really hard. And at the end of the day, Figma is a tool for designers. You don't really see your clients taking an interest and trying to learn Figma. So the people that are using Figma, they have the experience, you know, they have been working as designers for a really long time and they can come up with much better things than these plugins can. So like I said, use these as a source of inspiration. Another thing that I didn't check and I would recommend that you always check when you use any kind of plugin is if you can use whatever it generates for commercial purposes. But yeah, I think there's so much to be said about AI in design and I could go on and on here. And I would love to keep the conversation going if you want to DM me on Instagram. Here's my handle, it's myadasolza.co. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a like, that really, really helps me. And if you have any experience with Figma plugins, please leave a comment and let me know what your favorites are. There are a bunch of other videos on AI and design here on the channel, so make sure you keep watching and I will see you next week.